Hid Mila Falsa, my name is Kiana, Business Development Manager for New in the Mara, a dedicated marine innovation development centre. Today we have Fanula Quinn from Kelpie in New South Wales and Australia. Fanula was immersed in aquaculture from a young age and has a passion for ocean health and innovation, leading to building resilient communities. Coupled with over 20 years experience in project management and strategic planning, Fanula is now working on marine bioproducts and solutions derived from seaweed. So let's hear some more from Fanula. So hi Fanula, thank you for taking part in today's Innovator Insight. So let's <laughs> jump right in and start with your background and how you got involved in the marine sector. Sure, um, so yeah, I was actually born into aquaculture, I guess you'd say. I grew up in a, a lobster fishing town over on the West Coast. And um, my father actually started fin fish farming and, and brought back technology from Norway when I was uh, a child. So got to see the hatchery experience and then offshore sort of sea pens. Um, so I've grown up in that environment uh, and then went really into community development and social planning after I left school, but landing back here in this marine sanctuary where I live in Jervis Bay really, uh, yeah, during COVID sort of came back all the aquaculture and the passion for sustainable um, blue economy solutions and innovation came home to roost. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we, I, I founded Kelpie and um, it was, right on the back of the summer bushfires here so and during a lockdown so I was really looking for a climate action solution that that has a I guess a commercial um, business attached to it so commercializing a, the climate solution was was on my mind yeah, um, yeah so and I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the film in in Ireland but uh, there's a film that came out in Australia called 2040 um in 2019 yeah so we basically looked at all of the technology we have on the planet today and what it could look like by the time our children are grown if we implement all of these climate uh positive solutions right now there was a big focus on kelp farming and and its role in sequestering carbon and the uh jobs it can create for coastal communities and i was just completely hooked on that idea so um yeah. Yeah, um, so your experience, I guess, with seeing aquaculture farming as you were a child, coupled with, I suppose, your your um, background and your interest in social enterprise, and then the climate action piece and the circular economy, Kelpie was born. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think what excites me about seaweed farming, particularly in coastal areas, is you can create so much social uplift from these the jobs that come from it, and um and it's become sort of a really interesting concept to add as a as a additional cash crop to people that are seeing declines in fisheries and and other forms of aquaculture where um you can now add seaweed and it will also help with fish yields and and the biodiversity at the same time mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah the more i talk about seaweed the more obsessed i become so <laughs> there's good. so many reasons why i yeah. love it yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us about Kelpie and I suppose the, the business model or the structure and again, the most important part, the product that you were looking to produce. Yeah, so uh, I entered a climate um, accelerator uh, back at the beginning of last year and it was really where I had to hone um, what is that green business idea where you can commercialise, you know, something that will help heal the planet. Um, and that's where I came to my hard bioplastic solution. So seaweed based. Um, and what I discovered in the journey um, of looking at all of the users of plastic and who would take up this um, innovation first was uh, that cosmetics manufacturers, particularly with an eco-conscious um, consumer they're looking for something that isn't going to make them feel bad at the end of the day they can get their planet friendly um, cosmetics and put this in the green bin at the end of the use and it will actually create a fertilizer with your 
garden waste. So, and this is my first prototype. So I've got got a cap there. It's a bit hard to see. Maybe I'm a bit too bright in this in this light. Um, and I also have a rat test. Um, so it actually looks and feels like hard plastic. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's a hundred percent organic um, and will certified home compostable so it's been a big journey with uh with a big learning journey and finding the right biotech partners to, to sort of get to this point but really excited that it's that it's possible <laughs> yeah fantastic because yeah. I suppose looking at biofilms or um, biodegradable films especially from Stevie point of view um they're kind of like a wet product for mainly for food at the moment there isn't too mm. too much hard plastics and um, they're all mm. quite soft so it's fantastic to see that you're looking at targeting I suppose the harder plastic market um for those types of products yeah and at the time I mean I've got four four young daughters and lots of curly hair you wouldn't know it from my hair but lots of curls and they just go through so much shampoo and conditioner and you look in the bathroom and go oh there's too much plastic in here so that was really my focus I just really wanted to solve that problem and I, and there are a lot of people um lurking on the films and the cling wraps and which is really important. <laughs> they're all they all need solving, um, but I was really focused on that, and and I came to this solution that's like a hard composite, basically. Um, mm -hmm. But it was really important to me that it, it will break down and not create microplastics, and and also just as a beacon for growing the seaweed farming industry at large, because it's it's really important that we are at the least rewilding and and um bioremediating and planting more kelp out there but to create sustainable regenerative futures is what really excites me about the whole yeah. industry as well amazing yeah. so we could have seaweed because the seaweed based cosmetics going into seaweed based hard composite plastic isn't that the dream <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's exactly where i mean I'm, i want to see one of these with some with some seaweed in it and you you just you know it's it's natural so you finish it up and you just throw that whole thing in your garden that would be that would be amazing. that's a dream yeah yeah and have you looked at I suppose the the breakdown time with the life cycle of of the of the material yeah so um at the moment we've done some testing and it looks like so really my innovation is actually the the pellet so it's a um a pellet that you can send off to any plastics plant in a normal traditional plastics plant and not make any adjustments at all it will be uh, able to withstand that injection molding process into any hard plastic um, and looking at the raw material coming in which is seaweed um, what type of seaweed without giving away any seaweed trade secrets are you looking yeah. at one particular strain or are you looking at a mixed bag of, of seaweed or how are you looking to um, so source that material as well yeah. will you be farming or will it be a community effort or how how is that going to happen yeah so um for me i was really interested well set on uh regenerative ocean farming and that's um really the only for, for something of this scale when you're looking at trying to replace plastic you need a lot of biomass so um it's certainly not a sustainable option to be relying on wild harvest for that um, output. Um, so when I looked at around Australia, we, we actually don't have that commercial um, farming uh, industry established yet. We're still on the cusp and there's, there's marine leases waiting, but realistically um, at scale biomass production is a while off. So um, I've looked offshore, but regeneratively sourced, so regeneratively farmed seaweed. And I've looked at species of seaweed that are in proliferation and, and readily available. They're not in a scarcity and they're hardy enough to be grown um, quickly and um, you know, just strong and robust species that are easy to farm and and mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and not an uh, and something that is endemic to the region that you're farming it in as well yeah. was really important. Um, yeah. 
because I suppose at Kelpie you're still uh, at the really early stages you're about what two years in 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 business at the moment and you're really at that that early stage (laughs) R&D yeah yeah I am and uh, I mean I guess some of the benefit to being in a in a two-year lockdown in Australia is um had a lot of time to really investigate and deep dive and and reach out globally to a a network of seaweed experts which has been really enlightening and and really encouraging and there's a lot of support um, around the world for for like-minded people in the space which has been unbelievable yeah so talking again about kelpie what are the next steps for the business and for you yeah so um for me i'm i'm working on getting this into a pilot with cosmetics partners who I've been talking to for the past year and and we're really uh, excited to trial it and see how the take up is in the market and then really for me I'd I'd love to be um, producing obviously at scale and a big driver for me is also the social impact that you see from seaweed farmers around the around the world particularly in climate affected areas and developing countries Um, there's a huge contingent of females in in the cultivation space and the farming space and um, creating jobs in that sector is really exciting for me to to see what outcomes you 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 witness in the community and with their families so yeah yeah, that's um that's where I'd like to get to just to keep growing it and keep optimizing um the innovation so we can replace as much plastic as we can and yeah and heal soils and create jobs and help biodiversity in the ocean all those good things wow fantastic it's really really a fantastic initiative Nuda. we wish you all the best with it there's an awful lot of synergies between i suppose where you are in australia and ireland minus the weather (laughs) yeah well well, it has been raining a lot here lately yeah (laughs) Okay, maybe not too dissimilar, <laughs> but it's fantastic to see, I suppose, the innovation that you're driving there in Australia. And potentially we might see your products down the line here in Ireland. It'd be fantastic to see something like that. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. And I would love some Irish uh, seaweed products in my in my packaging. That would be a dream as well. We <laughs> might look at a joint venture down the line and joining the dots. <laughs> well, I, I am a joint venture, so <laughs> half Irish, half Australian. So it sounds, sounds right to me. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So much for your time today, Fanula. I really appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you.